welcome back to the podcast. Mindless War presents Scare Act Appreciation Week Two, Scare Act Appreciation Month 2022. Today we've got a great guest for you all: photographer, scare actor, and overall BAMF. We have Sway. How are we doing today, Sway? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me back on the show. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, and uh, for those who, who may not recognize him, um, you may have seen him this year out on the streets of Carnival. Last year, as one of the stunt people inside of Mesmer 2020 at the Urban Haunts Ledge. Urban Haunts, what, what was it? Uh, Urban, Urban Legends Haunt. What a tough name. Or 2019, as he closed the door on Shadowlands at his first year of KSF. Um, but just to start us off here, I do have a question for you here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, based upon uh, my deep dive, as I, as I had mentioned before we had started, I did a deep dive on your Instagram. Uh, I know that since 2018, you have been auditioning for Carnival. Um, and then last year on the show, we had asked you, where do we see Sway in 2022? Um, and you said you would love to see yourself on the streets of Boardwalk. How does it feel to finally accomplish that goal? <laughs> Oh, you have no idea. It was it was like bittersweet. I think a tear came to my eye on the day of opening night, just being able to see the see the lights above my head. It it felt great. It was such a great feeling. Yeah, it, I, I I can only imagine how great it felt. I didn't mean to cut you off. But if you want to continue, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I was gonna say it's something that like I, I can die happy. That was the last thing on my bucket list, and now that it's been complete. I pretty much did everything I set out to do in my life. That was the last thing that I ever wanted to achieve. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a great goal. It's, over. it's done. Game, set, match, in the words of tennis. There it is. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all have yeah, a great week. Hope you guys enjoyed this. <laughs> month. Sway is officially retiring, and we're good. Uh, you know, what was funny is uh, I, I, I'm glad I didn't say a lot in the beginning because I realized my mic was muted. Uh, and the the OBS, but it's okay because I didn't say much, so <laughs> I, I don't have to worry about it. But it's unmuted now, so we don't have to record re-record this episode in the future. So that's good. Um, I mean, it's good to have you back on the show again, buddy. I mean, last time we we talked about it, you know, you had just opened up Mesmer, and I mean, what a what a beauty of a maze that was in in 2021, and you got to be a part of that. I mean, how is it feeling now? You, you got to close out Shadowlands, open up Mesmer, and now you're on the streets of Carnival, like. That must have been that must have been something. That, I mean, that's all. Those are all special years for you. Yeah, I mean that's 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 something that I I, I mean that's 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 got to be an honor, right? Oh hell yeah! And then especially with the amount of talent that got added to Carnival, just being able to say I got to work with them, I got to be part of that cast that Hostel got to be a part of, and just like many amazing monsters I got to join that year that deserved to be there. It felt great just working alongside them and getting le getting to learn a lot from them. I'm glad you said hostile and not mooch because you know he's not. <laughs> he's not. You know, he's he he will be on spoiler. He will be on later this he week. Will be on later this week. Uh, <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Actually, I think it's tomorrow. One yeah. of these days. One, One of these days. days. Yeah. Um. So um. Just here. Start. We're gonna. We'll, we'll start at the beginning of the season. Um. And, and kind of tying it back to to last season. Um, so thinking of like how you were in 2021 inside of Mesmer um, and then now going onto the streets, what was the biggest difference you think um, in the way that you scared out on the streets? Um, honestly, the, the biggest difference was definitely I had to come up with a lot of movement because I was always pretty much a puppet. I was always harnessed and limited to my movement. So I had to uh, pretty much just learn a learn how to create movements and learn how to be a character out there. And that was pretty much my biggest struggle is because I, I was always a bungee clown. So there's only one way I can really go is just in and out, in and out. And so I had to learn to move, move amongst the crowd and just, you know, uh, not scare like a maze monster. Cause at least that's what uh, a lot of street monsters were giving me advice on is to just work a crowd. Yeah, definitely. Especially with that zone. I mean, bright lights, all that stuff. I mean, you're you're out there, man. They, you're you are noticeable. I mean, one thing I did like about too about this year, especially with you, is is your makeup, dude. I mean, when I first saw you, I didn't know it was you, and then I saw it on Instagram, and I'm like, oh shit, he made Carnival this year. 
Um, <laughs> okay, that's cool. And then the little box you were, you, were, you had, too. It, it, I, oh, hell yeah. I, I don't know why. It just gave me Hellraiser vibes the entire time I'd see it. Hey, I don't know if that's that's not the first for. time I heard that. I love that. I don't know. I mean, it was, it was, it was. I was like, hey, this motherfucker's about to summon demons right here on car. <laughs> about to open up the freaking portal. I don't know. I don't know, man. Are we ready for it? <laughs> yeah, that Jack in the Box. That was actually something my girlfriend got me, and like, she decorated it and painted it for me. It was like super cool. Where's she at? Tell her thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, she's outside actually getting her hair done. Oh, fun! Nice. But uh, yeah, the, the whole point of that Jack in the Box was just to kind of uh, scare uh, guests with the music. Because it actually played music for a while until it broke. Uh, but you, you could barely out. hear the music too. So next year, I got to definitely buy a louder one because you could barely hear it. Make some device so it has like a speaker to it and it's fucking blare it at people. Yeah, I was, so I was thinking off. about using like an amplifier or something, but like I gotta really like look into that and actually invest time into building something like that. This is where science comes in. Science <laughs> exactly. rules. Science rules. <laughs> I may know a guy. It's okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, just uh, every night before you go out, go hide a, a Bluetooth speaker out there, connected Bluetooth. It'll be <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be good. Just, just just connect to the PA system. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. No more welcome to the carnival. Just just hearing the the Jack in the Box ring. Um, what are some other? Uh, so what would you say were some of your biggest inspirations? Um, as you developed your character for uh, Boardwalk this year. Biggest inspirations, like what? Um, what made me a better better character out there, or or like when you developed your character, like where did you find like influence from, like? Like, was oh, there, like, gotcha. a specific clown that you, like, saw out there? Um, was there some movies? Um, uh, other things that may have helped inspire when you were thinking about, like, how you were going to scare, what your costume looked like, and all of those things. Yeah, gotcha. So, costume, I honestly just rolled with whatever Knots gave me. And so, as soon as I saw it, I was like, all right, there's certain things that I didn't want to use. Like, I had a little hat. I lost the hat because I didn't want to use it. <laughs> and then I, ha I had a vest. I didn't want to use the vest. So I just kept the button up and the bow tie. And pretty much I bought myself arm guards. And because I didn't want to show skin out there. I wanted to be completely uh, concealed. And pretty much where I picked up my inspiration from was uh, Boogeyman from obviously wrestling. And oh. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. <laughs> those are some those, those, those are two are different like people two, like you went from i'm the boogeyman and i'm gonna get you to mr bean <laughs> yeah i like it I, I, like it. I didn't know you were a wrestling fan sway <laughs> oh i love wrestling who wasn't a wrestling fan growing up who, i'm still a wrestling fan what are you talking about i just got uh, nah, i stopped watching night, bro come on <laughs> I stopped watching once it became for kids and they took okay, off all the bro. bad words and all that Listen, stuff. Listen, Triple H is in charge now. Things are changing for the best. I guarantee <laughs> it. I promise you that. All right, I'll give it another chance. AEW. <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, is, is he managing that? No, but that's still another good wrestling promotion. I, I was hearing everyone's going there now. That will bring that will bring back your, your 90s to early 2000s wrestling vibes again. I promise. <laughs> All right, for sure. I'll check it out. But the Boogeyman and Mr. B, I mean, I, I don't think anyone would ever guess that, to be honest with you. Like, that is definitely something where when I'm thinking about it, I'm just like, okay, I could kind of see the Mr. Bean. I could see that. I could see the aspect of, of the Boogeyman, which is uh, one of the creepiest characters that ever laid face to the WWE as well. But um, that's awesome, dude. I mean, just to hear the fact that you, you grew some inspiration from that. What was... Um, what would you say, obviously, now that this this zone is so lit up and it's so, you know, it's kind of out there. There's no hiding. There's no, I mean, you're you're constantly, you're being watched 24-7 while you're out there. What was the yeah. most challenging thing for you to kind of, to work with? How, was, how challenging was it to work for that? I mean, obviously, you know what it was like in a maze. How challenging was it to be in the in the bright lights with literally thousands of people coming up to you at night? Honestly, I would say the biggest thing from being in a maze compared to out there that I, I never realized this was going to be an issue was so in a maze when you get harassed, like you get harassed and then they walk through like that. That's it. In, in streets, if you're getting harassed, 
they kind of like either follow you or linger and they won't ever yeah they'll linger or they won't ever stop like following you and bothering you and so i guess that was the biggest thing this year it was trying to deal with people like that and just before even approaching someone you'd get yelled at from across like a couple feet and just get yelled at in your face and that was like the biggest thing of just overcoming that and giving everyone the same uh basically the same positive scare that you want to even though you know they're trying to bring you down but you just don't let that get to you you know yeah 100 percent, man you gotta i mean from what i've heard a lot of people say you gotta have very uh, you have to have very thick skin to do this job yes and, very thick skin and and yeah you're gonna deal with drunks assholes edgars i don't know little kids yeah little kids yeah i mean you gotta deal with all of them you know they're all gonna come through uh and 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 do it. sadly do that even though we always strongly encourage them not to do that on this channel um, we yeah pretty much promote that here um but yeah i mean i i know what you mean because i i had the opportunity to actually scare a couple nights at a, a haunt and uh i i went through a lot of that you know you, even in being in the maze and stuff you think you know these kids they come up to you and they think they can for some reason they just think they can act out when, when, yeah when it's stuff like this and i don't know i don't know why that is but oh god i mean the amount of times i just shut kids down just by saying words and whatnot it was hilarious so <laughs> i mean that that that's my that goes to my next question like what what you know when things like that happen, how hard is it for you to, to stay in in character and kind of roll with it to kind of brush them off? But then at the same time, you got to do it in character and, and keep going. Oh, I, I pretty much just always laughed at them. Whenever whenever they do that to me, like yell in my face, all I do is I, I would just do my clown laugh and just move on. And it was it was a creepy clown laugh. It was. <laughs> hey, thank you. It was. It was a good one. Um. I want to talk a little bit about your makeup, specifically your makeup artist. I mean, this was some one of the best makeup designs I've seen uh, out there in Carnival. I mean, the, Carnival had a lot of great makeup designs. Uh, who was your makeup artist for one? Let's give her a shout out because she or he did an, an amazing job, or they, whatever they want to be pronounced as. Um, how did they? Uh, how did you guys come up with the design? And 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 how many? How you know, how long did? Did it take to design every night, and and what was your favorite design? Because I know usually they like to play around with different designs. Yeah, so my makeup artist this year, um, excuse me, I had a a girl named Leslie, okay, and she was freaking incredible because uh, she's done a lot of makeup for a lot of street zones, and she actually has done a lot of makeup for a lot of Carnival legends like Kazoo, uh, Boots, Joey. Um, the boogeyman and so she just from that knew what to do like since day one i was always impressed by her dude i mean the makeup looked great it was one of my favorites dude I, and it was something that like i said was noticeable i loved it, it <laughs> thank you it creeped her out most times like she'd tell me not to open my eyes until the makeup was done because as soon as i opened my eyes she was just like nope because she was scared to clowns herself. Uh, oh, oh, wow. So that, that is quite the job. Where It's like, oh, I need you to do makeup um, specifically for this clown that's in Carnival. And I know you're terrified of clowns, but you have a job to do. So let's get it done. <laughs> she was like, keep those Yeah, so that shot. was the best part about it. Yeah, I, my sister is absolutely terrified of clowns. And if she had that job, I don't know that she would have survived. Because she would have just been like, nope, that's not happening. But I wonder if it's a different kind of... <laughs> I mean, maybe for some people, maybe for not, but I wonder if it's a different type of vibe when you're actually working with the person and, like, you know the people as people rather than, oh, they're going to scare the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. No, it definitely is because, I mean, that's how I ended up joining. I used to be scared of this stuff until m the monsters ended up becoming my friends and it just made me realize, hey, you know, that's just my friend scaring me out there. Mm -hmm. And so that's what gave me the courage to end up going to Honey Bents. Oh man, yeah. Because I, I I know that once again on my deep dive onto your Instagram, you you obviously used to, to you take photos of, of various things, concerts, um, different like photo meets, um, as well as you spent time at like Queen um, Queen Mary Dark Harbor taking pictures, not Scary Farm. Um, so was the goal like always to become a scare actor, or did because of your love of photography um, spawn you to to decide to get into scare acting? 
honestly, uh, it was my friends that got me into scare acting. Like, I just wanted to be able to work with them. They told me all these stories and all these experiences that they had. And I just was like, I want to do that. Like, I want to have those. I want to be able to tell my own stories. I want to be able to experience my own, uh, like, my own kind of experiences, you know? <laughs> and the lucky there's a podcast like this that can let you do that exactly. Exactly. That's what I <laughs> do. Open the doors every November and be like, listen, come watch this podcast. I guarantee you you'll love it. Um. No, I, I, I really uh, – the one of the things I love between uh, – with Carnival is the ever-growing rivalry between Carnival and the Goring 20s. Um, <laughs> you know, this was, a, this was a definitely a, a, a competitive year between the two zones because the two zones brought their A game out. You know, last year yeah. Carnival stepped away with the, uh, the, uh, the zone of the year. 2021 and this year goring 20s was out for blood and they yeah, they were they took it back uh they took back what, what they thought they rightfully deserved and they de and they deserved it this year I, I, no disrespect to y'all and carnival but i have to say goring 20s this year they were on their a game man and, and and it was it was really hard to even as a fan to decide and pick who was the better zone this year because i saw some really great stuff in carnival but i had some really good interactions and i saw some really great stuff in in going 20s too so what was it like every week after week having to and you and i know this because you and i have this conversation all, all season long but what was it like to have that rivalry obviously everything was kind of a mess this year with the ranking system of who they were choosing and whatnot but what was it like to continue that rivalry to, to try to better yourselves and, and to better the zone energy all that stuff it, it was super fun honestly like hands down I, I, I agree with that statement that Goring 20s just ki absolutely killed it this year. There was a, a week where that zone just had the trophy four nights straight in a row. And, like, that was just insane. Like, the amount of energy that they put out there every night is just insane. And it was funny because whenever I'd go into the dressing room, I'd either uh, run into court. And so whenever I'd run into court, automatically I'd always hear, it's rigged. And so whenever I saw him, I would just say it back to him because that was just our thing. Oh, and it was like the funniest thing. We do love court. Court's a good guy. <laughs> we do love this court. is back-to-back -back podcast where we're having a court shout-out. Court shout-out. People like court. He's a good guy. He was part of Scott He's a good guy, team. honestly. He's, He's very friendly. I love him. We love having <laughs> court on. We need, get, we need to get back on the show, man. My, send him <laughs> hey, court. It's been a while. I also uh, I had another friend named Kyle, and he was coming from Paranormal. So I was super proud that he won it technically back-to-back, -back, coming from Paranormal into Goring 20s, winning both Golden Haunts. Like, that's just insane. Like, I told him, that's so cool to just be able to say you won Golden Haunt back-to-back. The two-time. Yeah, the uh, two-time. The two-time. You, you know, I mean, and, and to talk about Carnival, you know what I mean? Like, Carnival had so many new talent that came on this year, you know, so many new faces that, you know, you know, added to the, to the, the madness that is Carnival. You know, you had Lucio coming over from Ghost Town, um, and I'm so pissed off that I missed the night where he brought out Hostel for like 20 minutes. That, that was sick. Did you not see that clip? No, I haven't I, seen that clip. Uh. <laughs> he, he put on the blindfold and acted like Hostel in Carnival for like a cool 20 minutes. Oh, wow. It was the greatest thing ever, and I was like, I'm so pissed off I missed that in person. Wait, who has the clip? Because I want to see this now. It was all I have homework. I saw it on Instagram somewhere. He, I think he reacted <coughs> it. You could hit him up for it. I don't know who has it specifically, but that was cool. Uh, I mean, to see awesome. that. I mean, there was a lot of talent that, that came from over from Ghost Town on here. There was a lot of new faces that never scared before. There were rookies, and there were some new ones that came in from mazes like yourself and whatnot onto the streets. I mean, what was it like to be around – not only the the talent that's that's you know been on that zone for some time, but some new talent that have come over. Like, how was that? How did that make you feel uh, welcome going into the the zone? It felt great, honestly. Like that that's what made the season so much better for me. Was just the amount of talent, and they were all great people. They were all positive and just motivating and inspiring so that definitely helped out a lot this season it was just incredible seeing people from hollows people from ghost town people from other mazes and people it was their first year out on streets like in general 
like that was their first year and it was incredible to share that experience with them oh, that's awesome dude i'm glad you guys all had a great time that year i mean i i mean i could tell like since night one the energy was amazing so oh hell yeah i have so many funny moments with lots of different people and it's crazy like to say i got to share those memories with them uh, speaking of uh, different uh, people out there, uh, you had mentioned uh, a little bit previous in the conversation that like you had different like people help mentor you and help guide you from that transition from mazes out into the streets. Um, who who do you think were some of your biggest mentors out there when you were on the streets? My my biggest mentors out there, honestly, um, one being Denmark. He was a uh, he was the strong man, the guy with the big dumbbell out in yeah. Carnival. He he came from Hollows. That guy just helped me because my biggest struggle was interacting with guests. I'm not much of an intera interactive person, so that was kind of uh, hard to learn. But anytime that I ran with him, I felt more comfortable with speaking, and that brought a lot of character to my uh, that brought a lot of character to my um, well season. <laughs> I died. And then um, Rabbit too. Rabbit also helped with that. I mean, you look at, you know, I mean, especially everyone on that zone, everyone has something unique that they brought to the table this year. I mean, and, and you even had some of the veterans getting in there and, and, and really adding to that as well. But, you the, like, the new people that came in and whatnot, I mean, so much talent and so much stories to be told on there. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I think is, you know, a staple at that event is, is sliding. Now, did you have the opportunity to uh, to do that this season? I know, I know that for first years, it's it's kind of like an apprenticeship thing. Did you have the opportunity to do that, or is it something that you're not like? I don't, I because I personally think you don't need it to scare. You did a really good job without it. So I I want to know your thoughts though going forward as to like if you wanted to come back, would that be something you'd be interested in doing, adding on to the character, or you think you're good without it? No, yeah, definitely. Next year, the plan is to take the slider test because I actually did get to slide. But I only slid the last week of Haunt, and I slid on Thursday and Sunday. And then Monday, which was Halloween, I kind of just took it off to just scare naturally without any slider gear. Yeah. Dude, I mean, that's, like I said, it's a staple at Knott's. It's, it's something that's been around for years. But like I said, too, you, I don't personally think you would need it to enhance anything of you, man. You, you were doing you. You were at 110% every single night. Oh, thank you, thank yeah, you. So, sliding or not sliding, man, I think you're, I think you're in good hands. I think you'll be all right. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, another question here, just thinking back to like your photography days, um, and then now as a scare actor, uh, what has been your favorite part of transitioning from behind the camera to the star of the show and, and someone that people are taking photographs of? Um, it it feels nice, honestly. Like I I appreciate how much time photographers spend out there and taking photos of each each and every one of us cuz i used to be i used to be them i used to be out in the zones and taking photos of everyone and it creates memories and it makes it makes both sides feel good so like i just enjoy the 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 whole community and how much bonding how much more we bond from just that from photography to the haunt community it's just a nice feeling uh getting your picture taken okay. on the other side from being behind the camera yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's something that uh, me, especially like when I go to record, it's 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 just a lot of fun to see what I'm going to get on camera because you never know. Every night's going to be different. Every night's going to have something new. There's going to be like a new someone doing something they haven't done before. They're, they're test trialing something that that may have worked or they don't know it's going to work. But it, it's been, you know, I that's one of my favorite parts every single season was to go out there and to see my friends scare, but also to, to capture some of those moments on camera. Um, but there's also moments that we like to capture just for ourselves, like in our head. Was there, I know there's probably a lot of moments, but there, was there any specific moments that you know, that was like, I'm kind of glad I, I had that to myself and, and the others that were involved with it. Oh, like photo wise. No, just, just, just personal things like that's in. Here. Oh, personal things. Um, that you just remembered, like, I'm kind of glad I, that was just for me and then the people that were involved with it. Like, huh? I guess the biggest moment that I would say, like, that <clears throat> would be this one time. Uh, I, f I forget their names because I'm still learning people out in the zone. Um, I know his name is Gabriel, but I don't know his uh clown name. 
he put me on his shoulders and I was holding the air cannon and we basically created a clownzilla kind of air cannon because there was he was carrying me but there was another tall guy holding the air cannon towards me and I had a blast the the air on guest but there was so many clowns around us just shouting and and saying make way make way it was like the funniest thing it was like seven clowns doing one bit and it well, was like the funniest thing i think you should know that that exact photo we actually have and that's your thumbnail for this video hey what <laughs> we actually uh we've been teaming up with uh with saki with dented and uh they they take great photography not not dissing anyone else but they're uh close friends of ours so we felt comfortable approaching them about doing this and uh, i'm glad we've gotten the opportunity to display so some of their work that you've seen in the thumbnails um so yeah she caught that on camera of you um on someone's shoulders shooting something and it looks freaking great i was like that's his thumbnail it's that's no it was it was amazing that's his that bit only lasted five minutes and then we were told get down get down <laughs> every minute though right oh heck yeah <laughs> Uh, that being said, I mean, I, I know there's probably, I don't know if, I don't know if it's going to, anything else can top that or not, but what was one of your, your, I mean, that, that, that zone is known for funny moments, bro. What was one of the funniest moments you had? I mean, I know that was a pretty big one right there, but there, you know, there was a whole season long. What were some of the funniest moments that you remember? So one of the funniest moments that I had, uh, so rabbit, like I said, I was I was always running with either rabbit or Denmark if I was if I wasn't by myself or or Aflac, but uh, this story's coming from rabbit. So we were running together, and he was telling me how um, Mumbles used to do this thing where he he'd get little kids that are playing with the basketballs. He'd tell them, "Hey, pass it over here," and then so like they'll throw the ball. And he'll just walk away. He won't interact with it. He'll just walk away. So there was a time where Rabbit was like, pass it, I'm open. And he sticks his arms out. Like, if he's going to catch the ball, the kid throws it. And then it just bounces on the floor and, and goes into a game. that A game that wasn't even being attended or, or like, you know, r running by an attendant. Right. So they had to wait there and ask to get their ball back. And I just thought it was the funniest thing because I've, ne I've never seen him act, like, act mean. He's always such a nice guy. So seeing that was so funny. Oh man, that I mean, it's moments like that. I think it's why we attend Haunt. You know what I mean? Like that's why <laughs> we love Haunt is because to see stuff like that. I mean, you know, in the beginning of the season, it's always figuring out what your character is and what you're gonna do. And midway through to the end, it's like, all right, shenanigans time. Yeah, there's endless shenanigans in Carnival. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Me and Sammy know that more than anybody. Yeah, I, I don't want to just. Oh, sorry. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it, Sway. I don't matter. I was gonna exactly. say, Cardio, <laughs> Cardio should just have a slogan: "Try not to break character." <laughs> I, I heard the other slogan is uh, the, the job of this character is first to to scare the guest, and if they can't scare the guest, entertain the guest. And oh, if you yeah. can't entertain the guest, at least entertain yourself. So, at least if you if you have to get to the third objective, you could do that. Um, and I think that's what makes Carnival special is those shenanigans. And if they're not able to scare you or entertain you, they're at least going to entertain themselves. And I think that's what makes <laughs> Carnival special to to fans like us. Because uh, every time we go, we never know what's going to happen. And I, I can speak for myself and probably speak for Tony. If we had the chance, we would love to duplicate ourselves five, six times. Because to go through every single zone and maze to see all these shenanigans that's happening. Because it is unreal. What happens on the streets right. of Not Scary Farm? I need to make a clone machine quick. <laughs> clone myself. I could be at all. I could be at like five different haunts in one night, and people would be like, "How?" I'd be like, "Science." <laughs> Science rules. Um, you know, you you talked about uh, the last time we had you on that. You you know, you you you're a big fan of Carnival, and this was like your dream zone to be on. Now that you've had the chance to play in Carnival, is there anywhere else that you would like to have the chance to get to play at? You know, I mean, or do you want to continue growing in Carnival or, you know, do you want to do Carnival for a couple more years and then go somewhere else? Like, what what are the future plans for you? Um, My future plans, honestly, like, I've, I've found a home in Carnival and I've grown attached to Carnival ever since 
ever since I went in as a guest and I saw it, that's just a place I've always wanted to be in. So my heart will always be set with Carnival, but ultimately, wh wherever the creators want me, that's where I'll be scaring for years to come. Damn. And, and you know, talking about the future, you've got next year the 50th anniversary of Not Scary Farm. I mean, this is a huge yeah. milestone in, in haunt history right here. Um, and, and looking at that, you know, where you know you, you start hearing things around the community, you start hearing rumors of people potentially wanting to return. Um, so, what does this mean for you? It, it, does this mean like that audition? You got to go ten times harder, or it's like you know what? It, even if I don't get it this year, I still get the opportunity to come as a guest and experience it, and that's what's important as well. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm always going to go 10 times hard on my audition and try to give them the best audition I possibly can to get my spot back. But no matter what, even if I don't, I, I always tell people this, that like we're in Carnival. I'm just glad I got to do one season. I, they can put me in a maze next year if they want. And like, I'll still be happy because I got to finally com com accomplish my dream, you know? I mean, that's all that matters, too. I mean, that as long as that made you happy in the end of the day, you know, I mean, you can walk away saying, yeah, I did that. And, and I had a fun time doing it, and I will never forget those memories because those are memories will live with me until the day I die. You know what I mean? And a lot yeah. of it's on camera, too. A lot of it got photography and, and, and video and whatnot, and those will live on forever as well. So big congratulations to you, my friend. You made a dream come true for yourself. Thank you. Um, one, one thing I, I loved um, from your previous podcast that you did with us is you said – um, regardless if it's day one or the last day, you're going to give 110% and give all of the energy um, that you can to whether you're on the maze or if you're now on the streets. Um, so what what would you say you had to do this year um, to, to keep that energy throughout the entire run? I know last year you said it was adding uh, monster energies towards the middle of the run. What Did, did you do anything special this year? Um. No, it was pretty much the same. I guess this year, I would say instead of Monster, it was more C4. <laughs> I was going to say, instead of instead of Monster, it was actually C4. <laughs> we, be up, we be upgrading up in here. Yeah, I, went to, I switched to pre-workout dry scoops, just full, fully madman. <laughs> oh, no, those things save lives. Because, like, when you're just drained and, and you have no more left in you, you just drink one of those cans, and it's like you weren't even tired at all. <laughs> now, yeah i've heard c4s is, is, is a currency backstage at knots oh yeah yeah it is yeah. i i have to ask because uh there's been uh there's you know we've 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 caught this person doing this multiple times how many times did mooch eat chinese food from panda express oh my god i think anytime i saw him he was eating <laughs> panda <laughs> But, but then again, heat's heat's up like by the break room area, and I I normally stayed outside. But <laughs> I'd see him. I saw him with pandas, so I'm not lying there. <laughs> Is that your question for him tomorrow? That made me so um, fucking happy that you said that. Now I gotta ask him what he says. And every no, for actor that we have on from here on out, I'm asking that question. You're asking oh. that question. I saw Panda between him and a lot of other people. No, but there's an ongoing joke. There was one night I think he had it like three or four nights in a row. It was hilarious. Like oh, not damn. Panda, but just Chinese food in general. <laughs> so if that, it's not Chinese food, it's Taco Bell with Mitch. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to ask that question. Mochi just got put on the spot. And I'm going to ask um, that question again on Sunday when we interview. Speaking of people loving things and having undying love for something – uh, once again, in my deep dive of your Instagram, I found out you had an undying love for Elvira. When did that love begin? Um, and what is your current uh, how, what is your current love level for Elvira? Oh, I, I still love Elvira. I collect a lot of memorabilia from her. Whatever goes on sale, I'm always buying stuff. I just don't post about it as much. But she was the main reason why I visited Knott's. So from what I'm hearing is like if Elvira ever asked you out on a date, you'd be like, sorry, babe, I, I kind of I have to like this is a <laughs> once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't leave her. Oh, but what a gentleman. I, I, I would. I would. Smart answer. It would take a while to think about it, though. <laughs> you'd be like, there would be a thought process, though. There would be a thought process. And that's 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 the accounts. 
<laughs> there would be a pot. Now, Elvira, I would say, was one of the 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 people that that helped make that event what it is today. You know, with her show back in the day and stuff, and 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 she even, I think she did one last year where she actually retired and whatnot there, and it, it was yeah it was magical. She did do the uh, the twirling tassel dance, and that was fun. That was the way that she went out with a bang, and that was like the best way to go out. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah, I know that. I know that Sway met her three times in one year. <laughs> so once, once again, I, I I did do too much too much looking through your Instagram. He's our, he's our broadcast journalist. Does his research. <laughs> yeah, I, I I stay doing research. So uh, and, and and talk about the things that I know. Yeah, no, I stay doing research. So this is a this is me speaking not to whomever asked to be on the show. I'm going to go through your Instagram and I'm going to find a a very fun and deep question for you. Um, so just know that. So if there's anything you do not want me to see, you might want to go back and take that off because I will find it and I will ask. What are you, Liam Neeson? I will find you and I will kill you. <laughs> oh man, Sway. I mean. It must have been, you know, it's it's always a good feeling to get that phone call, you know what I mean, and and find out that you are gonna be scared in Carnival. That must have been a, a, a mind blowing experience just to get that phone call, and then you know, day one of scare school for you, orientation, you know, sitting there and, and just getting more excited, and then and then day one, you know, going out there, giving it all. Day two, day three, the freaking the rest of the freaking the run. Up until the final night, you know, Halloween night. I mean, that good. I'm I'm so proud of you, man. I mean, coming from where you you know you started and and you, your journey along the way, and and to finally get to a place where you have been a fan of for a very long time, and you've wanted to be part of for a very long time, and and you finally got to accomplish that goal. You know, I mean, that's 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 all. That's right there is an accomplishment of its own. You know, I mean. So a big congratulations to you on that, man. That that is something that uh will uh, be part of your life now for the rest of rest of your life. So that that's gonna be a lot of fun to look back at ten years down the line when you have kids or something. You know what I mean? So thank you, yeah, thank you. And and hopefully one day you if you do have kids you could scare with them. That'd be cool. I'd like to see a a fifty year old Sway come back and scare with his twenty year old <laughs> son or something. <laughs> that'd, be that'd be awesome that'd be dope so stay in shape Sway, so we can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> or you're like oh damn right i'm gonna make that happen i'm scared with my son <laughs> we want to we want to see you at not 75th anniversary yes we do <laughs> That's fun. got another 25 years ahead of us let's, let's do it heck yeah um you know uh it, it, but again it's just it's cool to be part of something especially on the 49th going into the 50th you know and you got a you got a long road ahead of you. You got a long road ahead of you, man. Long road, and 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 it's only just getting started for you. You're you're, you're at your peak right now. You're at your prime, and 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 God knows what we can unleash when we get uh some pads on this kid and 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 whatnot. I'm I'm excited to see that. Oh, I can't wait. It's gonna be a fun time. So, with that being said, um, I guess my final question for you would have to be um, if, you know, with the journey you've been through, scaring on a scare zone, that is a dream come true for you. What advice would you give people that are, 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 that are in a much similar situation that want to get to a certain place, an end goal? What advice would you give them to, uh, to keep, keep moving forward or whatnot? Um, honestly, like the advice I was given is just don't, don't stop. Like, Never, never give up on, on if you want to be out there on streets, don't give up, keep auditioning and just, uh, take advantage of the whole room scare, uh, till they tell you to stop and just 360 as much as you can and just have fun. Ultimately have fun. Couldn't say it better myself, honestly. Sammy, do you have any, uh, final questions for Mr. Sway? I do. I have one final question. <laughs> And normally, this is where we would ask our most hard-hitting question of the entire, um, the entire interview. We would ask you, "What's your favorite mo- favorite scary movie?" But you've answered that on the previous podcast, letting us know your favorite scary movie of all time is Puppet Master. Yes. So I had to I had to do a little extra work today to find a, a good hard-hitting question for you. <laughs> all right. And so this was uh, this was one of the questions where I once again deep dove into your Instagram. 
And on this Instagram post, it's a picture of a uh, thread. Um, and you said, there's no better job in the world than being a carnival clown. Do you still agree with that statement? There's no better job than being a clown in carnival? Yeah, you said there's no better job in the world than being a carnival clown. It's uh, I can show you. There it is. There it Holy. is. Holy. All oh, right. It's not focusing, but. you said? Yeah, this was 2018. Fast forward to 2022. Do that, does that statement still? Same. Uh, I still stand by that statement. Yeah. Still stands by that statement. After working the season at Carnival, we can say. Like I said, I'm always going to want to go there. Four years later. <laughs> bang, bang. There it is. Four years later, and Sway still goes by that statement. Still believes in that statement. Believe in the shield. Acknowledge <laughs> Roman Reigns, you know. I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, Sway, I, I am incredibly proud of you, proud of you, kid. Um, you have really, uh, in, in, the, in the past four years that you've done this, you have literally proved to people that dreams can come true. With a lot of hard work, with a lot of dedication into your craft, that, that, that big dreams like going on a street zone like Carnival for you can come true, and it, and it did come true. And even if you were to never do it again, you at least got to do it once, and you can die happily knowing that you've done that at least. And uh, for that, we are incredibly proud of you. I mean, we, we got to interview you last year uh, for Mesmer and, and opening that maze. I mean, that maze, in my opinion, is still one of the greatest. And, and to see you now go from Mesmer to Carnival, which is literally right outside. Like, <laughs> it like, is. Step outside right there. Um to see you play around in Carnival with with a lot of the other talent on that street, you know, I mean, congratulations. That's that's all I can really say at that point. <laughs> it was definitely fun. Like, especially, it's funny that you say, like, you know, that Mesmer's right outside. Yeah. Because I would always start waves by the line. So huge lines would build up right outside Mesmer. And I would call Denmark over to start a wave. And we would make waves. We would make guests do the wave. <laughs> Well, Sway, I, I we appreciate all you've done this season, um, and we hope to see you back on on Carnival next year. Uh, we'll we'll see a, a a Sway 2.0 hopefully out there, maybe some upgrades to the costume or character or whatnot. Who knows? I mean, even if you had the same look, I'd still be like, hell yeah, that's Sway right there, bro. Just you know, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, we gotta get a picture next year though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's something I didn't do much of this year just because it's my first year out on streets. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to spend my time back there taking photos. So I just wanted to be out there in the zone because yeah. I also wasn't out there as much as I could have been because I only had four hours of scaring. Oh, really? Um, compared, to, compared to other people. Okay. Well, yeah. Next year. It was a weird year. <laughs> next year, we're getting a picture. Next year, we're going to solidify it on a stamp of approval right there. I, I was fortunate enough to give you a few stickers, though, so that was cool. Yeah, thank you again for those. Oh, no problem. Limited edition, by the way. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, again, thank you so much for everything you, you put into Carnival this year, man, and, and, and added, you know, you, you added to that table of, of talent, and, and I definitely won't forget it. I mean, I know a lot of people won't forget it, and, and um, I can't wait to see what, what comes next for you. Um, so with that being said, if you guys like today's episode, hit that like button. If you guys want to leave some nice comments down for Sway, because if they're not nice, they're getting deleted. <laughs> if you want to leave some nice comments down for Sway, leave them down there, because I guarantee you he'll probably come back and look at this and read them. You know, we love doing Character Appreciation Month. It's the one time a month we get. To, this is our huge thank you for all the hard work and dedication you guys all put in um, every season. Uh, between talent, behind the scenes, everybody who comes together to put these haunts together, um, this is our thank you love letter to you guys. So we appreciate all of you, all your hard work, all your dedication to to bring these events to life each and every year. And the only way we know how to say thank you without actually saying thank you is by going above and beyond and giving uh, some of the stars of these zones, these mazes, uh, these haunts, um, some spotlight so they could share their stories so we have a blast doing this we got a, a ton left to go every weekday on the nights of horror you will see a new episode of character appreciation month so make sure you have that bell notification turned on to be aware every time we put up a new episode of character appreciation month we are on week two right now and we got two more 
banger episodes ahead of you. So stay tuned for that. We just wrapped up another banger episode today with Sway. So go follow uh, Sway. Where are you on on social media, buddy? Uh, I'm only on Instagram, and it is at Sway's Creepy Life. As soon as you type that up, a clown photo will pop up, and that's me. And you can go follow me on there. Oh, yeah. Go follow Sway, man. He's got a lot of great uh, photography on there. Maybe you can go back and look at some of the stuff Sammy was talking about. So, <laughs> uh, Sammy, uh, where can they find us on all of our social media platforms? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Knights of Horror, on Instagram at The Knights of Horror, and on TikTok at The Knights of Horror um, for all of our great content. Um, <laughs> I dropped my lens. Let's go. <laughs> turn up, turn up. Um, but yes, go ahead and follow us on all of those social media platforms. Um, and go ahead and hit those hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit those bell notifications. And if nothing else, we hope you have a great rest of your day peace peace